أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم Today we will be starting with Surah Al-Zumar. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Tanzeel Al-Kitab Min Allah Al-Aziz Al-Hakim Inna Anzalna Ilayka Al-Kitab Bil-Haqq Fa'budillah Mukhlisan Lahu Al-Deen Ala Lillahi Al-Deen Al-Khalis Sadaq Allah Al-Azim رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل لقطه من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين يا رب العالمين i have already told you that these two groups of bakki surahs the eight from surah al furqan to surah al sajda eight surahs and then from these 13 surahs starting from surah al saba and it will come to an end on surah al ahqaf in 26th part they want to make 21 surahs and the central theme of these surahs is tawhid although along with tawhid other articles of faith that is resurrection the life of hereafter the jannah and jahannam the hell and the garden of eden etc etc these things are also discussed along with the institution of prophethood nabuwa risala but the main is the focus is on tawhid and out of these mostly the surahs are discussing the tawhid of creed tawhid fil aqida theoretical tawhid that is we believe in allah is one nobody is equal to him he doesn't have any associates or partners or rivals or equals neither in his person nor in his attributes he begot none and not was begotten himself all these things are theoretical about allah subhanahu wa taala there are no associates nobody can intercede on any behalf behalf of any person without his permission so all these things are they belong to our creed our aqida you may call it dogma or as i am saying it's the theoretical aspect of tawhid Now the other aspect of tawhid is practical tawhid. To worship Allah and Allah alone. To obey Him, absolute obedience to Him only. All other obediences will be subject to His approval. We can obey our parents, we can obey our elders, we can obey our teachers, we can obey our rulers, provided. their obedience doesn't mean a disobedience to allah subhanahu wa taala if the elders the rulers the parents the husband to the wife as they say don't do this why allah subhanahu wa taala has declared it to be obligatory you have to disobey and if you don't disobey them it means you are disobeying allah subhanahu wa taala and this disobeying allah subhanahu wa taala is shirk now you have accepted them as superior to allah subhanahu wa taala you are accepting their command and rejecting the command of allah subhanahu wa taala allah says this is haram this is haram but maybe your parents pressurize you do it but how if you 
more at the pressure of the parents. What does it mean? You have disobeyed Allah. So there is a very good saying of the Prophet ﷺ, لا طاعت لمخلوق في معصية الخالق there can be no obedience to anyone who is created. All are created, parents are created, saints are created, prophets are created, everybody. Fi masiyat khalik. If, you know, the command of the parents is not against them, okay, obey them, no harm. If the command of the rulers is not against the deen of Allah, not against the command of Allah, okay, obey them. No harm. But when they collide with each other, then you have to cling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and disobey every other person, whosoever he might be. This is Tawheed. Now this is the practical aspect of Tawheed. And I have discussed only at the individual level, this practical aspect. This practical Tawheed now rises to the level of the state. At the level of the state, if you declare here is sovereignty of Allah, everything is under His sovereignty. This is Tawheed. And if you accept sovereignty of someone else, he might be anyone. One individual, as, in, as it is in the monarchy, or the sovereignty belongs to the people, to the whole masses, common people. It doesn't make any difference. It is shirk in both ways. Because sovereignty belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you accept the sovereignty of Allah, and under the sovereignty of Allah, within the sharia and commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you establish a system, social system, political system. This is called the system of caliphate, khilafa. What's the difference? There was Namrud who said, I am the Lord, I am God. He argued with Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. We have read it in Surah Al-Baqarah. Then there were Pharaohs. They used to say, alayhi salim ulku I am the monarch of Misr. This Egypt is under my, under me and the whole irrigation system is controlled by me. On the other hand, Dawood, he said, Oh, I am a bondsman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I myself am a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I only rule you according to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Apparently he was also a king, but he was not a king. He was a caliph. Last night we read the ayah. Ya Dawood, o inna jalna ka khalifatan fil not sovereign, not king. Who was Solomon? Suleiman alayhi salam, a caliph. What was Muhammad in Medina sallallahu alayhi salam after Hijrah? It was a government, no doubt. Who was the ruler? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. But he was a caliph, not sovereign. He was himself a bondsman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As, as we say in that our kalma shahadat, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. First he is a bondsman and servant of Allah and then he is the messenger of Allah. This position of messenger of Allah is secondary. The primary position is he is the abd of Allah. As I have pointed out many a times, the three surahs, very important surahs, in the opening ayats of all these surahs you find this position of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as abd. It is highlighted. Subhan al-lazhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa. Alhamdulillahi al-lazhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yajal lahu ibaja. Tabarak al-lazhi nazal al-furqana ala abdihi layakuna lil-alamina nazira. This position, he is the abd. This is superior to his position that he is a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Actually, this is the practical aspect of Tawheed, which are, unfortunately, who, even those, you know, groups among the Muslim Ummah, who attach maximum importance to Tawheed, and they think about themselves, they are the Mawahideen, even they don't know this aspect. 
if you don't accept sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, theoretically you are believing he is one, nobody is equal to him, nobody will be able to intercede before him for anybody except with his permission. All these things, these are theoretical aspects of Tawheed. The practical aspect of Tawheed is Ibadah. But this Ibadah has to be exclusively for him. Yesterday in my Jumaf sermon here in this very center, I discussed this subject Ibadah. And today I want to repeat briefly. Quran says that all the jinns and human beings were created to do Ibadah towards Allah. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَلِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ All the messengers call the people to ibadah. إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ أَنَنْزِرْ قَوْمَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَيَّاتِهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَلِيمٌ قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عِبُدُ اللَّهِ مَا لَكُمْ مِنِ اللَّهِنْ غَيْرُ And the call of Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اِتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمُ Number one, total obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolute obedience for Him only. All the other obediences will be conditional to the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll accept whatever you command me, provided you don't give me any order which is repugnant to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His obedience has to be higher up. So this is actually the meaning of ibadah. But this obedience should be based on a, a deep love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The body of ibadah is made of obedience. But the spirit of ibadah is love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And about this love also. You can love your spouses, you can love your children, you can love your parents, you can love your country. But love of Allah should remain supreme over all these loves. If it is so, then you are a Muwahid, Unitarian. But if love of one single thing or person is more than the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now you are a Mushrik. All loves, all affections to be within and below the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَأَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالُ لِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٍ فِي Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O people, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, or your spouses, or your relatives, or the wealth that you have accumulated, or the business for which you keep fearing, lest there should be some recession, and the houses you have built and they are very dear to you, if the love for these eight things is more in your hearts than the love of Allah and love of Muhammad and the love for jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then go and wait there till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala issues his final command, gives his final judgment. And Allah is not going to guide such transgressors. Your love has to be more than anything before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. This is Tawheed. But if something is more dear to you than Allah, now for example, if wealth, money is more dear, you are ready to grab it, although it is coming through haram means, forbidden means. What does it mean? Love for this money is more than the love for Allah. So this money has become your ma'bud. And there is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, Ta'isa abdul dinar wa abdul dirham. Woe to the person who is abd of dinar and dirham. His name is Abdul Rahman or Abdullah. But actually, he is abd of dinar and abd of dirham. Dirham and dinar is more important to him, more dear to him than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the hadith. Ta'isa abdul dinar wa abdul dirham. 
So this practical aspect of Tawheed is discussed, especially in the coming four surahs. Surah Al-Zumar, Surah Al-Mumin, Surah Al-Habim al and finally Surah Al-Shura. Now we begin with Surah Al-Zumar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تنزيل الكتاب من الله العزيز الحكيم Descending down of this book is from Allah who is almighty and all wise إنا أنزلنا إليك الكتاب بالحق We have sent down this book to you O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم with truth, total truth فعبد الله So worship Allah Obey Allah, love Allah. Now for worship, I'll be adding these two words. Obedience to Allah, love of Allah. Actually, they go to make ibadah. Otherwise, only worship, you know. You are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you are not obeying Him. It is, you are saying something else and doing something else. In the prayer, you you say, But actually, you are not doing so. You are telling a lie. If you are not obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you say, Iyak anabudu, you are telling a lie. What gain will you have from this prayer? Unless what you say and what you do, they are harmonized. They are the same. Fa'udillaha bukhne sallahu Now this is the term especially. To keep your obedience exclusively for Allah. I have told you, it doesn't, do, it doesn't say that don't obey your parents. You can obey your parents, provided it doesn't mean disobedience to Allah. You can obey your elders, your rulers, whosoever they are, but provided it is, it doesn't entail a disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Absolute obedience is exclusively reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what was meant by these words. Mukhlisan lahu deen. Deen means obedience. Allah lillahi deenul khalis. Behold, for Allah is the only pure deen. What does it mean? Allah accepts pure deen. Khalis deen. No impurity. No impurity of disobedience. No impurity of accepting some other also for obedience, independent of the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the impurity. So Allah lillahi deenul khalis. Allah demands from you deen, where obedience, absolute obedience is exclusively reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ تَخَدُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ As to as for those who have taken... Besides Allah, other gods, other protectors, they say, we don't worship them, but only in order that they can take us nearer, nearer, nearer to Allah. Mushrik is the one who believes in the big Allah, the great Allah. But there are small aleha, mahadeo, and Devis and Devatas, God with capital G, one. Gods and goddesses with small g, innumerable. But these gods were taken as if they will make us nearer and nearer and nearer and nearer to the, that big God. In the Allah yahkumu bainahum. Verily Allah will judge between them on the day of judgment in all the matters in which they had been differing. In Allah, Allah yahdi man huwa kathibun kaffar. And verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't guide to the right path. Whosoever is a liar and ungrateful. Lower ad Allah wa yattakhidha waladan lastafa bi ma yakhluqu ma yasha. Had Allah wished to take a son to himself. He could have chosen anybody from his creatures. Subhana. But he is above all this. He doesn't need a son. He is ever living himself. You need sons. Why? Because you, you, you know you will die. Your name will continue through your lineage. Your sons and the, then the grandsons. But Allah is ever living. He doesn't, he doesn't need a son. 
هو الله الواحد القهار هي ذا الله دي دي اونلي ون اند دي اومني بوتنت خلق السماوات والارض بالحق هي كرييتد دي هيفنز اند دي ارث وذ تروث وذ بيربس يو كفر الليل على النهار هي ميكس دي نايت كفر دي دي بي يو كفر النهار على الليل اند ذن هي ميكس دي دي كفر دي نايت بس سخر الشمس والقمر هي سبجكتد فور يو دي سن اند دي مون كل يدري لاجل المسمى اول ار رننج اون ذير اون كورسز ذير اون اوربيتس فور ان ابوينتد بيريد اوف تايم اجل مسمى الا هو العزيز الغفار بيهولد هي از ذا مايتي اند هي از ذا فورجيفر خلقكم من نفس واحده هي كرييتد يو اوت اوف ون بينج ثم جعل منها زوجها اند فروم ذات بينج هي كرييتد A spouse or a mate for it. Vandra na kum mina la naam hai samaniya tazwaj, and he has sent down for you eight pairs, eight couples of cattle, mainly the you know there were the goats, the sheep, the cows, and the camels. These were the four cattle which were there in Arabia. So mostly these are mentioned. Two in each, she camel, he camel, male and female. So they go to make eight. Samaniya tazwaj. Yakhluko kum fi butune ummahate kum. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala creates you and makes you perfect in the wombs of your mothers. Khalkan baad khalkan, creation after creation. في ظلمات السلاس in the darkness of the three wheels he is giving you shape and you are in the womb of your mother first of all is the abdominal wall of the mother then there is the wall of the uterus then there is the membrane in which the fetus is wrapped up three But within those three darknesses, Allah is shaping you. Allah is making you your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears. Yakhlukum fi butune ummahate kum khalkum min baad khalkum fi zulumat insalas. Zalikum Allahu Rabbukum. He is Allah your Lord. Lahul Mulk. To whom belongs this sovereignty? La ilaha illallah. There is no god except Him. Fana tu sifun. Where from are you being diverted? In takfuru, and if you don't believe in him, find the law and you don't come. So Allah is Allah doesn't need anything from you. He is free from all needs. He is absolutely sufficient. Well, I yarza the ibadah he kufr, but he doesn't like this disbelief on the on behalf of his bondsmen and servants. But in takfuru, yarda ho lakum. And if you are grateful, he approves of it. While at other words, that you will not cry, and no burdened soul will be able to carry this burdens of the others. So, my Lord, be kumar jayokum. Then all of you, you will be returned to your Lord. For you, Rabbi, okum be maakun tum taamalun. Then he will tell you what you had been doing. Inna hu alimu mezaati sudur. Verily, he knows. Even that which is in your hearts and chests. Why is a muscle in sorrow durun? And when there is some affliction which comes to a man, human being, da rabbahu muni ban ilay. Now he calls upon his Lord. Oh Allah, oh Allah, deliver me. You know, turning to Him in repentance. Summa ida khawal nahu khawalahu neematam minhu. Then, when we have given him some blessing, that affliction goes. Nasiya maqa na yadu ilayhi min kabul. Now he just forgets what he has been calling upon us. What for? Wajala lillah ya ndadan, and then he declares rivals to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, equals to Allah. The Yuzullah am sabiilehi, so that he should lead people astray from his path. Ul tamatta bi kufreka. 
say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay, you rejoice and enjoy along with your kufr. Allah is not taking your life at once. Allah is not punishing you at once. Okay, with your kufr you can enjoy. You live a while. Inna kamin ashabin nar. But finally, they are, you are from among the dwellers of the fire. Amman huwa qanitun ana layl sajidan. As for who, as for that who remains standing during the hours of night before his Lord. Sajidan, au qaiman, sometimes standing, sometimes in prostration. Yahzarul akhirah. He is fearful of the hereafter. Wa yarju rahmatahu rabbihi. And he is hoping the mercy for mercy of his Lord. Pul hal yastavi lazina yaalamun wa lazina la yaalamun. Ask them. Can those people who know be equal to those who don't know? These are the people who know their Lord. These are the people who know that they have to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day. So now those who are absolutely heedless to these things, can they be equal? In the Mayat Azakkaru Ulul Albab, verily, admonition comes to only those people who understand. Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu to my bondsmen, O my servants who have come to believe in me, Ittaqu Rabbakum, have fear of your Lord. Whosoever does good deeds in this world, for him will be good reward. And the land of Allah, earth of Allah, is very wide and vast. You can make hijrah, you can immigrate. If at one place you cannot, you cannot worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exclusively, leave that place. Innama yuwafa sabiru rajrahum bighayri hisab. Definitely, the truly persevering people will be paid their reward in full, beyond reckoning. Full in the umir to anabud Allah mukhlisan lahuddin. Again, the same word is coming, mukhlisan lahuddin. This is the central theme of this surah. Ikhlas al-deen. Keeping the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolutely exclusive. Absolute obedience to Allah exclusively. Not associating anybody, anything along with the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, I have been commanded to worship and obey Allah. Keeping my absolute obedience exclusive to Him. No obedience to anybody else in which there comes some disobedience for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا تَعَاتَ لِمَخْلُوقٍ فِي بَعْصِيَةِ الْخَالِقِ وَأُمِرْتُ لِأَكُونَ أَوَّلَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I have been commanded to become the first of those who submit themselves, surrender themselves to the will of God. قُلْ إِنِّي أَخَافُ إِنَا سَيْتُ رَبِّي عَزَابَ يَوْبِنَا عَزِيمٍ And say, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, even I fear the chastisement of a mighty day if I also disobey my Lord. I don't say I am above disobedience, uh, above obedience. No, no. I am also an obedient servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Abdullah, I am Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ulillah Abdu Mukhlisan Lahudin is. See, note it. This phrase is coming repeatedly, repeatedly. Twice in the very beginning and then twice here. Say, Ulillah Abdu Mukhlisan Lahudin. I. Worship and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keeping my obedience, total obedience, exclusively for Him. Fabudu ma shaytum. You worship and obey whomsoever you like, min do nahi, leaving Him. Qul inna al khasirin al ladina khasiru anfusahum wa ahlim yawm al qiyama. Say the real losers will be those who are losers on the day of judgment and who have their families also in loss. Allah zalika huwa al-khustarul mubeen. Behold, that is the manifest loss. Lahum min fawqihim zulalum min al-nar. For them there will be coverings from above of fire. Wa min tahatihim zulal. And from beneath them also, 
the mattresses will also be of fire. This is for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to frighten His servants. Ya ibade, fattahoon, oh my servants, fear me, have my regard. Waladina itanabu ta'ud ayyabuduha. As for those who avoid worshipping any ta'ud, anyone, rebellion, Rebelling against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyabuduha. They avoid worshipping them. Wa anabu ilallah. And they have turned their faces towards Allah. Lahumul bushra. For them are the glad tidings. For bashir ibadi. So, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, give the glad tidings to my servants. What is taghut? Tagha means to transgress the limit. We say in Urdu, Darya Tughiyani par hai. What does it mean? When the river is within its bank, banks, it's okay. When it overflows the bank, now it is Tughiyani. Tagha and Bagha, these two words are very close to each other in Arabic. So this real position of all the creatures of Allah is that they have to obey Him. The sun is obeying him, the moon is obeying him, the galaxies are obeying him, all the angels are obeying him, everything is obeying him. And for man also, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَلِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ They have to obey. Whosoever doesn't accept total obedience of Allah, it means he has transgressed from his limits. He is taagut. He may be your father. He may be the husband of a woman. Ta'ut. It will be the system. The system is of Ta'ut. In Pakistan, if we don't, you know, establish the sovereignty of God, although we have it written in our constitution, sovereignty belongs to Allah. But that's theoretical, not practical. Actually, it's not the case. The so sovereignty of Allah is not established, it's Ta'ut. The whole system is Ta'ut. This America is the biggest Ta'ut of this, this world at this time. As Ayatollah Khomeini used to say, the biggest Satan, the largest Satan, greatest Satan on earth. That is true. So actually, whosoever crosses the limit, limits, boundaries of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is Tawa, and he becomes Tawood, whosoever he might be. الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقَوْلِ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ As for those who listen attentively the word, the word of Allah, فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَ And then they try to follow the best of it. In our deen also there are levels, concessions for the weak. Okay, you can avail of this concession. You can avail of this concession. But for the people who have the strong willpower, they must not avail of these concessions. You should try to be at the higher level of deen, not at the lower level of deen. There are levels, yes. As you know, when Abu Jahl was torturing that family of three persons, Sumayya, Yasir, and Khabbab. Khabbab was the son, Sumayya mother, Ammar, yes. Ammar was the son, Yasir father, and Sumayya mother. Now this torturing, 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 in the end he got tired. He said, if you once say something which pleases me, that your God, he is also a God, okay. If you, if only once you say this, I will let you go. Neither Sumayya agreed, she gave her life. Nor Yasir agreed, she gave, he gave her his life. But Ammar, he said, and escaped. But then he had great grief, what I have done? But then the Prophet came, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay, this is also permitted. To save your life, to say something, by which you can save your life. But at heart, you are fully satisfied with Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is also allowed, but this is second level. Why not to stay at the first level? When in this world you want to be foremost, higher and higher up, 
ہے جستجو کے خوب سے ہے خوب تر کہاں ایوری بڈی از ٹرائی ٹو ہیو بیٹر اینڈ بیٹر اینڈ بیٹر کنڈیشن آف لیونگ وائی ڈونٹ یو وانٹ ٹو پرسو دین آلسو ایٹ دی ہار اینڈ ہار اینڈ ہار لیولس اللہ دین یستمیون القول و یستمیون احسن اولائے تل دین حداہم اللہ دے آر دی پیپل ہوم اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ہیز گائیڈڈ و اولائے کہم اولون الباب اینڈ دے آر دی پیپل آف انڈرسٹینڈنگ ہو ہیو دی ریئل انٹلیکٹ افمن حق علیہ کلمت العذاب سو محمد ایز فار ہم آن ہوم دی چسٹائسمنٹ از جسٹلی ڈیو فا اف انت تنقذ من فی النار نو کین یو Take away from the fire such a person on whom the command of punishment and chastisement has come true. Dakinil ladina taqaw rabbahum But for those who have fear of Allah, their Lord, lahum ghurafun min fawqiha ghurafun. They will have lofty mansions and built over them another, another, you know, level of loft, lofty mansions. تجری من تحت الانہار and beneath them rivers will be flowing وعد اللہ this is the promise of Allah لا يخلف اللہ المعاد Allah doesn't go back his words and promises علم ترى ان اللہ انزل من السماء مان didn't you see that Allah سبحانہ و تعالی sends down water from the heaven فسلکہو ینابیع فی الارض then he makes it penetrate the earth as springs سُمَّا يُخْرِجُ بِهِ زَرْعًا And then with this water, he brings forth there with crops مُخْتَلِفًا الْوَانُهُ Whose colors are different. The crop of wheat, the crop of gram, the crop of corn, different colors. مُخْتَلِفًا الْوَانُهُ سُمَّا يَهِيج Then these crops, they reach their climax. فَتَرَاهُ مُسْفَرًا And then they wither so that you see that their color has now changed to yellow. سُمَّ يَجَلُهُ خُطَامًا And then finally he makes all these things a chef. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَ لِأُولِي الْبَابِ Verily in this is an admonishment for those people who have understanding. This is actually the simile for human life. When A son is born, you rejoice. But he's weak. But then he trains his puberty, he's strong. Then you know his hair turns gray. And so on. Body becomes weak. Then he dies. And he is buried. And his body disintegrates. It becomes a vain clay. This cycle of human life takes 50, 60 years, 30 years. But there is the cycle. In a few months, you find the same cycle in the botanical world. The cycle is going on. The same cycle. Then again, the field is barren. Nothing. Then again, you sow the seed and the rain comes. Again, crop. Again, greenery. Everything. Again, when this crop has been reaped, again, nothing. So this, this is the cycle. اَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ Think of that person whose chest Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened for Islam. His chest accepts Islam totally. And he is satisfied 100% with whatever command Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. He doesn't feel anything illogical, anything unbearable, no. In Sharah, he accepts everything. فَهُوَ عَلَىٰ نُورٍ مِّن رَبِّهِ So that he is on a light from his God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his Lord has given him a light. As opposed to those persons, فَوَيْلُ لِلْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِّن ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ There are other those people whose hearts have hardened regarding the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُولَائِكَ فِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ Verily. They are in the very manifest error. Allah nazal al-hadith, ahsan al-hadith, kitaban mutashabiham nasaniya. Allah has sent down, O Muhammad, on you, the most excellent discourse, ahsan al-hadith. 
kitaban mutashabihan a book whose parts are resembling each other and we have seen this the same subject coming over and over again discussed over and over again in different verse different styles different sequences mutashabihan masaniya and repeated of repeating taqsaibu min hujulud alladheena yakhshaud rabbahum the skins of those people who have some fear of allah subhanahu wa taala shivers with this quran when they read quran summa tadinu juluduhum wa qulubuhum and then their skins and hearts get softened for the remembrance of allah ila zikrillah zalika hudallah yahdi man yasha yahdi bihi man yasha this is the guidance of allah if you read quran and a shivering goes down you know your backbone when you read about jahannam about the hell and when you know the ayat of forgiveness allah is ghafur allah is sattar allah is halim and then you have some hope in your heart so then it means you have the light from allah subhanahu wa taala zalika hudallahi yahdi bihi man yasha wa man yudlillahu fama lahu min had and whom soever allah subhanahu wa taala has has led astray that is he has acknowledged his going astray you have chosen the wrong path okay go now when allah subhanahu wa taala has put the seal now nobody can bring him back on the right path aba man yattaqi bi wajhihi sul azab yawm al qiyamah so the person who will have to confront the worst chastisement of the day of judgment with his face he will have to face the fire of hell وقيل للذين ذوقوا لل وقيل للظالمين ذوقوا ما كنتم تكسبون اي ات ويل بي سيد تو دي ايفل دوورز ناو تيست وات يو هاد بين ارنينج كذب الذين من قبلهم دون اولسو هو بيفور ذم بيلايد فاتاهم العذاب من حيث لا يشعرون ذن دي تشتايسمنت كيم تو ذم فروم دوز كورنرز فروم ويتش دي كود نيفر ايماجين فَأَذَاقَهُمُ اللَّهُ خِزْيَ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا سُوَ اللَّهِ Made them taste the chastisement of humiliation in this world. وَلَعَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ And the chastisement of the hereafter is much greater. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Only if they had known. وَلَقَ ذَرَبْنَا لِلنَّاسِ فِي عَدُ الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ كُلِّ بَسَلْ We have struck in this Quran all the similitudes for mankind's guidance. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ So that they may get the admonition and the reminding. قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا غَيْرَ زِي عِوَجٍ And this guidance is in the form of an Arabic Quran. And there is no crookedness. The language is plain and simple, clear. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So that they may have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَسَلًا رَجُلًا فيه شركاء متشاكسون ورجلا سلم لرجل now another simile allah subhanahu wa taala has struck there is one slave who has a number of masters and one slave who is slave to one master whose condition would be better if you are slave to two or three masters this master is saying do this the other says no do this The third one says, "No, do this. You will be in a fix." But if you are the slave of one master, you can please him. He will be pleased with you. You can keep him pleased with you. So one Allah. This is actually the the normal life. We have to believe Allah. We have to obey Allah. Not you know obey Allah also and somebody else also and somebody else also. هل يستويان مثلا are these two persons equal الحمد لله all praise be to allah bal aksarhum la ya'lamun but most of them know not innaka bayyitun verily muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you will have to die wa innahum bayyitun in the same way these people who are opposing you they will also die summa innakum yawm al qiyamati inda rabbikum takhtasimun Then on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, 
you will argue against each other before your Lord. You will say, O oh, Muhammad وسلم, I had conveyed to them all the message, O oh Allah, which you sent me. Now they are responsible. So this argument is going to be there between you and your people, your nation, on the day of judgment. So who is a more more wrongdoer than the one who forges a lie against Allah? And it means that he says, I am a Nabi, I am a prophet, why revelation is coming to me, while there is no revelation coming to him. This is the biggest lie. If somebody stands up and he says, I am a prophet, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not chosen him. This is the biggest lie. وَقَزَّمَ بِسِدْقِ اِزْجَاهُ Equally wrong would be to deny and disbelieve the real prophet who has brought truth with him. So, if a prophet comes, you deny him, this is the biggest crime. But if you are not a prophet and you claim to be a prophet, this is also equal to the same. أَلَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَسْوَلْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ for all these types of disbelievers, Jahannam, hell is the abode. Now the contrary, Wallazi Jab is Siddhi. On the other hand, the person who brings the truth, that is, the Prophet, he has brought the truth for people, for mankind, was Sadda Kabihi. And he confirms all truths. And this the Mufassirin say this denotes to Hazrat Abu Bakr as the Allah one. Jab is Sir Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who brought the truth for the guidance of humanity. Walladhi was Saddaqa bihi is Hazrat Abu Bakr as the Allah ta'ala. He confirmed immediately. Ulai kahumul muttaqoon. These are the ones who have really fear of Allah in their hearts. Lahum aishauna in the Rabbihim. For them there will be everything that will lie, that they will demand. <clears throat> and this is the reward of those who good who do good deeds. They you kafir Allah anhum aswa Allahi abelu, so that Allah may acquit them of the worst deeds that they have, might have committed. Wa yajziyahum ajrahum bi ahsan Allahi na kalladi kadu yamalun, and then He recompenses them with their reward for the best of what they used to do. Now what is this meaning? Every good person also who is doing good deeds, but all deeds are not of one level. One virtue or one good deed is of it's good, but a lower, lower level. Other is of a very high level. There is still a higher level of virtue. Now whosoever has become successful on the day of judgment, now Allah Sala will ignore the lower side of his ex. And he will decide his level according to the highest deeds that he has committed. His status in Jannah, in the garden, in paradise, will be determined according to the highest good deeds that he had committed. Alayhi sallallahu bi kafir abdah. Is Allah not sufficient for his bondsman, his servant, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? By you have befuna ka bil lazina min dune, O Muhammad, they are frightening you regarding those whom they call. Oh, now, you know, the curse of Hubul will come to you. The curse of Lat and Uzra will come to you. Just that the people, you know, they frightened Hazrat Ibrahim. You have declared all our gods null and void. Now their curse will befall you in the same way. By you have befuna ka bil lazina min dune. وَمَنْ يُذْلِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ حَادِ Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leads astray, decides for him that he let him go, wherever he wants to go, then there is no person who can bring him back to the right path. وَمَنْ يَحْدِ اللَّهُ فَمَا لَهُ مِنْ مُذِلْ And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided to the right path, مَا لَهُ مِنْ مُذِلْ There can be nobody who can take him to the wrong path. Allah is Allah the Aziz in the Intiqam. Is not Allah the Mighty and the Lord of Revenge? The Intiqam. He takes revenge also. 
And if you ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? They will say, Allah. Now say to them, as for those deities whom you are calling upon, besides Allah, in Aradani Allah bi durrin, hal hunna kashifatu durri. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides for me something which is painful, can these, your smaller gods or goddesses, can save me and they can relieve me of that, of that, you know, affliction? Or, aw arada bi rahmatin. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided for me some mercy, hal hunna mumsikatu rahmatihi. Can they withhold the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When you say there is Allah, He is the greatest. There are smaller gods. Now the question is, who has the veto? The greater god or the smaller gods and goddesses? If you accept, veto is in the hand of the greater god. So now, all the scheme collapses. Then what for? To worship, you know, and show respect to these smaller gods. What for? Well, the final authority is in the hand of Allah. Oh, Hasbi Allah, say to them, Allah is all sufficient for me. Alayhi yatamakkalul mutawakkalun. In Him should all those who are trustful put their trust. Qul ya qawmi mulu ala makadatikum. And say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O my people, Strive whatever you are striving at your own places. In the amil, I am also striving for something. I am working for Allah. I am calling towards Allah. I am propagating this dawa of Allah, this call of Allah. You want to hinder it? You want to put obstacles in its way? Do whatever you can do. And I am doing whatever I can do. First of all, very soon you will come to know who succeeds. Whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives his help. Mayati hai azabu yusli hai. To whom will come the chastisement that will degrade them. Wa yahillu alayhi azabu muqeem. On whom a lasting chastisement will remain. Inna anzalna alayka al kitab al innaasi bil haq. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have sent down on you this book for people. We have sent down on you, but it is for the people, for their guidance. Bil haq, with truth. Fa manehtada, fa li nafsihi. Whosoever takes to the right path, gets the guidance, he gets guided for his own benefit. Wa man dolla, fa idda ma yudillu alayha. Whosoever goes astray, you know, the pain will come to him. Wa ma anta alayhim bi wakil. And you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are not a custodian over them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the souls of the people when they die. And those who don't die in their sleep, in their sleep, in our sleep also, consciousness goes. We are not self-conscious. Self-consciousness which is actually the biggest thing for us. It goes. فَيُمْسِكُ الَّتِي قَضَى عَلَيْهِ الْمَوْتِ As for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that he has to die, he keeps the soul with him. وَيُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ عَجَلِ الْمُسَمَّةِ And for those who were only sleeping and the decision of death had not come for them, for their souls are returned back. يُرْسِلُ الْأُخْرَى إِلَىٰ عَجَلِ الْمُسَمَّةِ Till a fixed term is completed. In the fizalik al ayat in the qawiyat of Akkarun, verily in this are the signs for those people who contemplate and think. Amit tahadu min duni la ishufa'a. Have they taken for themselves intercessors besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Kula walau kanu la yam lekuna shayya. Say to them, think, maybe they, do, they, they, they don't have any power with them. Wala ya kilun. And they don't understand. Qul lillahi shafa'atu jami'a. Say, all intercession is with Allah. What does it mean? Allah has the authority to accept or reject. Nobody in this universe has the power 
to force Allah to accept any intercession. No. None. In the shafaat, قُلْ لِلَّهِ الشَّفَعَةُ جَمِيعًا It is in the hands of Allah. لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّبَعَوَاتِ وَلَّهُ To him belongs all kingdom of the heavens and the earth. سُمَّ إِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ And then towards him you will be returned. وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ اُسْمَعْزَتْ قُلُوبُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُبِنُنَ بِالْآخِرَةِ When Allah is mentioned alone with the Tawheed, oneness, you find that the hearts of those people who don't believe in the hereafter, they are filled with disgust. What is saying? Tawheed? Okay. But, وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ now when they are mentioned, whom they love, beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِذَاهُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ Now they, are, they rejoice. You say something about Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani and Shaykh Ali Hajwari and Muinuddin Ajwari, rahimahumullah, they will be very glad, they will be listening to it. But if you begin describing the might of Allah, the exclusive obedience for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the judgment of Allah on the day of judgment, then you know they don't like it, okay? These things are there, but not very important. قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ فَاتِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَاللَّهُ عَالِمَ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ Say, O Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the knower of the unseen and the seen, أَنْتَ تَحْكُمُ بَيْنَ عِبَادِكَ You will judge between your servants فِي مَا كَانُوا فِيهِ يَخْتَلِفُونَ In all the matters in which they had been different. Different. وَلَوَنَّ لِلَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا And if these evil doers possessed all the wealth of the earth وَمِسْلَهُ مَعَهُ And also another like that, more لَفْتَدَوْ بِهِ مِنْ سُوِي لَذَابِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ They will be ready to ransom themselves therewith from the evil of the chastisement of the day of resurrection وَبَدَا لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يَقُونُ يَحْتَسِبُونَ and then there will come evidence before their eyes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what they were not expecting. They were not expecting that we will be resurrected and then we will be brought to the book and we will be required to explain our position. And now everything will appear before them. The evils of what they had earned and that which they used to mock at. Now this will encompass them. They is used to so mock. What is Jahannam? What type of fire it will be? How do you say there will be a tree also there? Zakum? Absolutely nonsense. They used to mock it. But then all these things will encompass them and engulf them. Faiza Masan insana dunum da rabbahu dana. When an affliction touches a man, he calls upon us, prays to us. Summa ila khawwalna hu ni'matam minna. Then when we bestow upon him a blessing from us, qala inna ma uti tuhu ala ilmin. He will say, this thing has been given to me due to my knowledge, my expertise, my intelligence. So actually I have earned these things by my knowledge. The same was the saying of Karun, in Nama Uti Tuhu Ala Ilm in Hindi. I have been given this all this wealth. So whosoever has this idea that whatever he has, he has earned through his intelligence or you know his planning, etc. etc. He is a disciple of Karun. He is going in the way of in the footsteps of Karun. No, no, this is a trial for you, a test for you, وَلَكِنَّ أَكْسَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But majority of them don't have the real knowledge. قَدْ قَالَهَا الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Those also said the same words as they are saying. Here is the reference to Qarun. فَمَا أَغْنَا عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ But then, when he was made to be swallowed by the earth, nothing could avail to him, could save him. فَأَصَابَهُمْ سَيِّيَاتُ مَا كَسَبُوا Then the evils of all that they had earned befell upon you. 
وَالَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْ هَا وَلَاءِ يُسْحَقِي سُوِبْهُمْ سَيِّعَاتُ مَا كَسَبُوا And among these people also who are opposing you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, they will also, the same evil will befall upon them also. وَمَا كَانُوا مُوْجَزِينَ And definitely, they cannot frustrate or defeat our plans. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات وزيك الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.